All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Western Slope College Fair. My name is Stephen McDowell. I'm a college representative with FIDM out of Los Angeles. And joining me is Christina Perez. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm from Bennington College. And uh, welcome to your workshop this morning. And uh, this one is entitled For the Artistic Souls Art and Design, which is printed, uh, presented, of course, by Bennington and Fitham. And what we're hoping from uh, today's workshop, this will give you a great blueprint for those of you who are uh, pursuing, researching, or maybe considering applying uh, with uh, art colleges. And we've got a lot of great uh, tips and techniques that I will be happy to uh, share with you. So to uh, kick off, here is the very first question that we all should think about as art students. Why is the portfolio such an important component of art college admissions? And I would say there's a couple of different uh, points and caveats with that. Uh, first of all, with the portfolio, particularly for the art colleges, we're really gauging to see and get a feel for how creative that student is. Um, and then on top of that too, we're also wanting to gauge and see how that student thinks creatively, how that student thinks outside the box. And also in terms of usage of media, the portfolio is a great way to be able to assess and also analyze and review uh, the skills from particular uh, art students. And in terms of uh, thinking about your uh, portfolio, um, overall, the advice I want to share with everyone is, first of all, we want to always be sure to draw from life. You know, look at the world around you. Use that for your inspiration for your portfolio, because really your portfolio, think about that as your resume. Think about that as your personal diary. You know, as an artist, this is an avenue for you to express yourself, to tell tell a story potentially, and to showcase your work, to let those college admissions know who you are as an artist and or where you're striving to be as an artist. Um, other pieces of advice is we want to work from your heart and spirit. So of course, Again, it's all about finding that source of inspiration. We'll want to look at that world around us, find that subject, find that uh, topic, maybe find that particular item that inspires you, and you're going to run from there. And then also another point that we want to keep in mind in terms of the uh, portfolio is we want to avoid plagiarism. So of course, we want to create our own work. But as artists, we're going to find something that inspires us. So let that inspiration drive your creativity and let that creativity drive the pieces that you're going to create for your portfolio. And in terms of the uh, portfolios, there's actually two different portfolio mediums out there. We have our traditional portfolio, and then there's also the AP Art and Design portfolio. So I'll start off first with the AP Art and Design portfolio for those of us in high school who are AP Art students. Now, when we think about the AP Art and Design portfolio, here's your first question. Why should I submit an AP art portfolio? Well, there's a lot of good benefits with that. First of all, when we think about college admissions, of course, that's going to make a stronger admissions application. Second of all, with the AP art portfolio, as an art high school student, you will be in line to waive college credit. So for example, at FITM, for all of our AP art portfolio applicants, and if they are accepted to FITM, we waive our color, our color theory class. So that's one important factor to keep in mind why you should uh, submit an AP art portfolio. Um, the second point to keep in mind, scholarship opportunities. At FITM and many other colleges around the country, they offer AP art portfolio scholarships. So my best advice for that is if you're going to go through the AP art portfolio process, work with your art teacher, research your colleges, and then start outreaching those colleges that you're interested in. And then that way you can find out what advantages they'll be able to offer you in terms of you submitting an AP art portfolio. Now, breaking this down, uh, Ford, for those of you 
you who are new to the APR portfolio process, basically you'll be submitting in three different categories, whether it's drawing, 2D, or 3D. And there's two particular sections or two particular categories under each of those particular categories. We have our sustained investigation, and this is going to represent the bulk of your portfolio, your APR portfolio. This is going to uh, contain about 60% of the work that you'll submit. And then the final portion is, is the uh, selected works. So basically your selected works, that's going to represent 40% of that APR portfolio. And um, when we think about the selected works, I always like to say a perfect way to describe that is these are your showcase pieces. These are going to be, if you're in drawing or 2D, five of the best of the best pieces that you've put together. And then if you're in a 3D space, then you're going to submit 10 digital images. So you're still going to submit five pieces in a 3D category, but you're submitting two different views, okay? And then there's also a writing component with the um, AP art portfolio. And basically with the writing portfolio is you're going to write about your sustained investigation, how you went through the process and what inspired you. But again, utilize your APR portfolio, APR portfolio instructor, because that's the key. That's the gateway for you to be successful in putting together your APR portfolio. Now, on the flip side, for those of us who are not AP art students, we can also put together a traditional Next question, how do I prepare a traditional portfolio? Well, basically, um, my best advice with the uh, traditional portfolio is to um, think about a focus. Think about telling a story in that traditional portfolio. Now, the challenge with that, and we'll talk about challenges in just a moment, but one of the challenges is with our, with our portfolio requirements, most colleges and universities, and thought all of them, we're going to be looking for something different out of that portfolio. So my best advice is when it comes to preparing that traditional portfolio, you know, narrow your college search down to maybe your top three, four, five colleges that you're interested in. Outreach those admissions teams. Look at the college and university websites to find out what their uh, requirements are. So again, um, with the traditional portfolio, it could be sketches, it could be photos of your completed pieces. Um, and also, my best advice, too, is especially being that we're art students, we're more creative, think outside the box in terms of putting that portfolio together. For example, um, let's say you're interested in fashion design that portfolio maybe could be working as a way to showcase a collection that has eight to 12 pieces in the collection. You know, maybe if you're a film student, maybe if you're a social media student or a creative student that's in the visual area, maybe that portfolio could be snapshots of um, eight to 12 pieces of a project that you're working on. So it really runs the gamut. And my best advice is again, work with your art teachers, work with the college admission advisors. We're here to assist and help students through that process. Now, another extension is our digital portfolio, and we're starting to see more and more and more of this. And now when we think about our digital portfolio is this is a great way to showcase our work in digital form. Now, I just mentioned video. So if you're maybe pursuing animation, maybe it might be film uh, production or directing. Uh, maybe it might be special effects. Well, that digital portfolio might be your real. And going a little bit deeper, maybe you that uh, digital portfolio could be utilized on social media apps such as Instagram. And I always encourage students, you know, if you are pursuing the arts and you want an easy, quick way for admissions um, advisors and admissions professionals to get a feel for your work, set up an Instagram account. It's completely free. Um, you don't have to make it accessible to everyone. You can share your handle with the appropriate people that you want to share that with. And then that's a great way to showcase your work, whether it's in video form or whether um, it's in our traditional uh, photography form.
Uh, what challenges might I face in putting together a portfolio? Well, you know, I'd say probably a couple of challenges. One, first of all, is uh, just thinking about what are going to be the pieces you're going to put in your portfolio. If we go back to our traditional AP, if we go back to the APR portfolio, maybe that uh, challenge might be, okay, what category am I going to submit? Is it going to be 2D? Is it drawing? Or is it 3D? So I always say, you know, when it comes time to thinking about what's going to go into your portfolio, think about your future path. You know, what specifically is it that you want to do as an artist? Are you painting? Are you maybe in ceramics? Is it embroidery? Is it film? Is it uh, digital art? Is it animation? So again, looking at all of those different areas to figure out where it is you wanna be as an artist. And then from there, taking a look at the work that you're working on and then putting your portfolio uh, from, from that point. Um, in some instances, you know, again, some colleges and universities, they wanna look at still lifes. They want to look at observational pieces. Okay, so those are again, as I mentioned earlier, why it's important to research that college and university as far as uh, what they're looking for out of that uh, particular portfolio. So, for example, at FITM, we're looking basically just for eight to 12 sketches, you know, and it could be, uh, and out of those eight to 12 sketches or eight to 12 pieces that a student would submit, it could uh, showcase a variety of media. You don't have to specialize just in one specific media, like, okay, my specialty is acrylic and everything is gonna be acrylic. No, we really wanna just see how flexible, how creative that student is. And again, if you notice here where it says your portfolio is an example of your work, it could be an Instagram page, it could be a video, it could be eight to 12 sketches, it could be a variety of media. Again, at FITM, we're really looking for how creative that student is and how they think outside the box. And then that'll vary from college to college to college. And I know Christina, she's going to jump in in just a quick moment and uh, give you even more um, advice. Um, I also, you know, would say to, again, um, when we think about college admissions, particularly at FITM, when it comes to your portfolio, our admissions process is one-on-one. -on -one. So, so we're not going to compare one portfolio with another portfolio in terms of um, admissions eligibility. And then also um, going a little bit deeper at FITM, the portfolio necessarily doesn't have to reflect that student's chosen major. Again, we're looking for those students who are very creative and they think outside the box. And to help you out, um, before I conclude uh, my initial portion here, I'm going to share a video with with you that will really give you a good blueprint. We have a uh, FITM student and you'll be able to see her as she goes about putting together a creative portfolio, which in this particular case is actually her, uh, her Instagram feed. All right, of course, the gremlins are here this morning. So hopefully this baby's going to start here. I see the uh, circle spinning around and around and around. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll come back to the video and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Christina. Thanks, Stephen. Um, hi, everybody. So for those of you who just joined us, I'm Christina Perez Ayala. I'm an assistant director of admissions at Bennington College. And um, my colleague is Stephen McDowell. <laughs> I'm a college representative at FIDM in Los Angeles. We're the uh, Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Uh, kind of looking down because I'm doing a little production here, trying to get that video going. <laughs> I would take it away. <laughs> That's okay, Stephen. Um, so if you do have any questions for us, we're going to have a brief moment for Q&A later on. But if you do want to ask a question in the chat for Stephen or for me, please feel free to do so. Okay. So 
Stephen was I telling talk. us a little bit earlier about um, how to build and create your portfolio for, um, you know, in order to, to have something for the admissions um, people to see and to sort of um, get to know you, who you are as a student, who you are as an individual, and as well, who you are as an artist. Um, so I'm going to share my screen in just a second. And we will now um, look at the Bennington perspective in regards to this. Um, so as Stephen mentioned, um, many art schools do require portfolio. And for students who want to study art and design, that is a great option. Um, however, I'm here to tell you a little bit about other types of schools that can also work with um, art and design that are not necessarily completely focused on art and design. So for example, we have Bennington College, which is a liberal arts school, and we do have a very strong visual and performing arts program, as well as there might be other bigger universities who might have a big um, art and visual, visual and performing arts program that you might be interested in. So we're here to tell you all about your options and um, yeah, for you to know a little bit more about what is out there, right? Okay, so I'm going to start with, and hold on just a second because, okay. Um, so Bennington College is a small liberal arts college that is in Bennington, Vermont. It, we're very, very near to Canada. Um, we were founded in 1932. And we have, we are the first school to actually incorporate the, the visual and performing arts to its curriculum um, for you know, a long time ago. So it's two of the areas that we are very, very well known for. However, we do also have all the rest of the liberal arts, which is why we have a very sort of holistic approach to how we perceive the visual and performing arts. So at Bennington, um, we don't have per se areas of majors and minors. We have more, we, it's easier to think about if you think about it as areas of study or concentrations. So at Bennington, we strongly believe that the best education a student can get is one that they are actively involved in creating. So we call this the plan process. And the plan process is where students working with their faculty advisors will develop exactly the way that they wanna approach the areas that they're interested in or that they're focused in. So for example, some exa I, I brought you some examples of plan, academic um, plans so that you can see more or less how these visual and performing arts can intertwine with other disciplines. So for example, we have a plan that was created in inclusive theater spaces. And what this involved was an approach from theater, from the perspective of theater, and an approach from Black studies. We also have a question, right? Because a plan, an academic plan at Bennington can be built based on a question. So for example, we had this. Why do we move that way? And the question was centered around um, looking at this from different areas of study, such as dance and society, culture, and thought. Um, maybe even a little bit of geography, right? So at Bennington College, we want to integrate um, the disciplines, the visual and performing arts, with any other discipline that you might feel curious about, and that can help you give an get a new perspective on what it is that you wanna do or that you wanna focus on once you move out of college. So, um, the second thing that is really important for a school like Bennington College is that not only students are engaged in creating their own education, 
but that they also get a very hands-on experience in this education. So here at Bennington, we call this fieldwork term. Fieldwork term is um, done at least four times during your time at Bennington. And it's a six week period between January and February where students go out into the world and actually work on that which um, they have uh, been learning in the classroom. So it's a very neat way in getting to know a little bit more about the areas of study that you're studying. And it's also a very low stakes way to, to see if what it is that you're studying is actually what you really do wanna do. Um, so I brought you a very short video, which um, we will watch. Please let me know if something goes on because I know that videos <laughs> can be troublesome sometimes in, in Zoom. So please feel free to just say in the chat, like, hi, we, we can't really see it or it's stopping. Um, so here we go. The video is going to have um, both fieldwork term experiences from the visual and performing arts, but as well from the other disciplines, because as I mentioned before, Bennington is a liberal arts school, so there's many different focuses that we have here. All right, so let's get started. Can you hear the video? No, we can't. We can't okay. hear it. Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine that it would be something like that. So I'm going to stop this for a second and just make sure that I'm sharing this right. Yeah, it's those two magic buttons at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right. No, it says. Okay, never mind. It's going to. To share your computer audio, please install the Zoom audio device. Oh my gosh. Okay, Steven, so videos are definitely not for us. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna um, reshare, but we're, we're gonna, I'm sorry, we're gonna skip through the video. So I'm gonna give you some examples of some field work term experiences that we had at Bennington College that are, um, associated with the visual and performing arts. So for example, a couple of years ago, um, there was a student uh, who wanted to study costume design. Now, from all the areas of study that Bennington has and offers, costume design was not one that was established. So the student approached costume design from a history perspective, from an anthropology perspective, and also from a theater perspective. So for one of her fieldwork term experiences, she was really, really sort of into and researching a lot about era dresses. So an idea popped into her head about, I want to know a little bit more about lace, right? So she went online and she researched and she found at, that in Italy, there's a master lace maker that still worked with lace as it has been done, you know, for centuries and centuries and centuries. So she approached the field term, field work term office, which we do have on campus that helps students actually fulfill the, these field work term experiences. And she said, hey, I found this um, master Italian lace maker and I would really love it if I could have a field work term experience with, with them. So through the field work term office, they actually were able to create this field work term experience that she really wanted to take. So that was, um, she actually got, you know, to fly to Italy for six weeks and actually work with the master Italian lace maker in, in lace making. And she came back and, and you know, um, it fed her, her plan and it fed her studies in, in ways that would not have been possible if these experiential learning um, moments were, were not given, right? So um, this is one of the ways, and this is just one of very many, very different um, fieldwork term experiences that are offered at Bennington College. All right, so let me again continue with the presentation. So I'm just gonna, okay, because this is, you know, 
you think that you got it all covered because you've been zoomed throughout the whole pandemic but <laughs> things always happen all right um so another thing that bennington really pushes and that has been very important in the way that we approach learning is that we have a teacher teacher practitioner model meaning that the teachers are involved in their fields so they are really into you know crafting um or creating things on on their own time as well as what they are creating in the classroom and this actually amounts to many different research and fieldwork term experiences that students can have also throughout their their faculty um their faculty right so there might be a, a, a teacher who's working on a book or um, who is working on some research, you know, on the um, great uh, coral reef or some fashion design, right? And students can actually access these experiences, which gives them also another different perspective on, on how to, you know, get to where they want to get to. So um, finally, at Bennington, um, we really, really believe that it's very important for students to have a dynamic and active approach to their education. So we encourage students to work collaboratively and think independently. And we really believe that at Bennington College, your work is an ongoing expression of how you view the world and how the community that you're in helps you shape that world. And once you go out into <laughs> the real life working world, you can also take all these experiences that you've had and actually be able to ground them into something that you really want to do and that maybe it's not necessarily already um, a work, working field, right? But it might be something that um, can help you open up different avenues of approaching um, a specific concept. So this is Bennington, and this is a very sort of bare bones, very quick explanation of, of um, what we are. However, um, well, I want to just leave you with um, this uh, QR code, which you can scan to learn a little bit more about the application process. And I'm going to sort of retake the portfolio um, aspect that we were talking about with Stephen. At Bennington College, we do ask for the common application or the dimensional application, which are the two ways that you can apply to Bennington. And in each of them, we really do encourage submitting a portfolio because that will really help us learn more about who you are. Because as you know, um, sometimes there's just really few ways in which we can actually hear a student's voice and through their portfolio or through the work that they've done before, it's a great way for us to get to know them. So, well, this is it. This is it for me. And um, I will now, Stop <laughs> so we yeah, can go. Yeah, and I'll jump back in. Exactly. And after that, uh, we'll go back and we'll offer a uh, Q&A for everyone. And uh, thank you uh, for sharing, uh, Christina. And um, everyone, uh, you know, uh, that was great information. And that's why, you know, earlier at the very beginning, I uh, was stressing, you know, for art students, you know, reach out to colleges and universities that you're interested in, because we're here to help guide you on your future pathways as an art student. And even beyond, you know, when we start thinking about your careers. And I would say above all, this is what makes FITM very unique as a uh, four-year college is that at our college at FITM, we focus and got gremlins again, we focus on the business of design and the uh, design of business. And um, at FITM, we're in Los Angeles, California. 
And we are a smaller private accredited applied arts college. And we are offering students well over 20 plus uh, majors, which I'll share with you in just a quick moment. And overall at FITM, you know, we feel that a college experience should be transformative. It should be challenging. It should be rigorous. But above all, it should give you an experience and empower you to begin a, a satisfying and successful career that's going to suit your future dreams and future your pa passions. And at FITM, we are offering students an opportunity to earn an associate degree, bachelor's degree, and through our graduate school, we are offering an MBA program. Um, other unique caveats and features about FITM is our world-class faculty. With us being located in Los Angeles, California, the campus is in downtown LA. Uh, we're home to about 3,000 students. All of our faculty members come in from the industry to teach at Fit them. Um, that is a huge, huge uh, advantage for our students. And then too, with our Los Angeles location, we're located in the heart of the largest fashion design district in North America. And then within a 30 minute drive of our centralized downtown Los Angeles campus, uh, we have the film industry, we have advertising, social media out at Silicon Beach. LA is a huge hub for interior design. And even even when we think about creative business, this is another area that FITM focuses on. So if we're thinking about those career tracks, such as apparel industry management, merchandising, manufacturing, management, product development, maybe if you're that creative art student who wants to start their own business, well, that's why we'll focus on both the design of business and the business of design through the 20 plus majors that we're offering at FITM. Uh, as far as admission requirements, earlier we shared and gave you some tips about the portfolio at FITM. Yes, the portfolio submission is one of those components. Um, again, we're really wanting to take a look at eight to 12 pieces of your best work. Um, if you're an AP art student, those eight to 12 pieces potentially could come from your selective works. If you're not an AP art student, again, think about showcasing the best of the best of your work, eight to 12 pieces. It doesn't have to uh, reflect a single medium. You can focus on a variety of media. And I always say, think of your portfolio as that working story as to who you are as an artist. Um, on top of that, uh, we, FITM has always been test optional. So we do waive the SAT and S, SAT and ACT scores. So we do encourage students, if you've taken the test scores, feel free to submit those. Uh, in addition, there's two interviews with our admissions team, a written essay, and we allow students to apply on a rolling basis. Now, FITM, it's a little fast paced as far as the academics because we're on a quarter system. So we're taking that full semester and condensing it down four times a year. And our classes do start every January, April, July, and October. So what I'd like to do for you now is I've been talking a lot. So I'm actually going to show you a quick video that will give you a good inside look at, at our Los Angeles campus home base. There we go. And I'll go ahead and I've got to stop sharing and reshare because beauty of uh, Zoom here because <laughs> I'm switching uh, content. All right, there we go. So we'll take a quick walking tour of our Los Angeles campus. Hello, where would you like to go today? FIDM in Los Angeles, California, coming up.
So that's a quick inside look at our FITM uh, Los Angeles campus. And bear with me here because I'm trying to be a director and stop all Thank the you content. For visiting Hang on one quick I hope you enjoyed your tour. But that's an inside look at our uh, Los Angeles campus. And um, our LA campus is home to just shy of uh, 3,000 students. And we are offering well over uh, 20 plus majors. And I'm going to put my QR code up here. And we invite you to connect with us at FITM. Um, I'm excited to look at all these buttons I'm trying to push. There we go. Okay, let me push another button here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry, Steven. All right, there we go. So there's that uh, magic with the uh, QR code. So we invite you to connect with us at FITM uh, by scanning our QR code. And I think, Christina, this would be a great opportunity to take a quick break and open it up for questions. Yeah, that would be wonderful. So Molly, <laughs> Do you, do you want to ask us something? Um, would you like to send something to us in the chat or you can open your mic? That's, that would be fine with us.
if not that's also fine don't worry don't that's feel so pressured cool. like oh yeah <laughs> she's got a question yeah okay. what's your what's your student to teacher ratio at both schools so uh at FITM, uh we are a smaller college and our teacher to student ratio is usually for each instructor about 15 students is pretty average yes molly that's a great question and just as as steven's answer bennington college is also a small school we're between 700 and 750 students at any given time. So we have an average of 10 to one for a faculty student ratio. Okay, it looks like are we having any other questions or if not, let's say, uh, would you like to share your video? I think that'd be a good opportunity to share your video here is this the uh youtube here yeah but i think i think we're almost oh yeah almost we are that's right yeah, yeah so almost. don't worry about it okay don't worry about it i can i can also send it through in the chat here molly if you want to see the video and that i tried but could not <laughs> <laughs> present um there's the video also if you want to check that out that that is completely fine um molly thank you for being here Oh, and, there's a, she's got another question. What's oh. your dorm experience like? And I'll say at FITM, our dorm experience is amazing because we actually offer housing instead of dorms. Uh, we have three properties that are, uh, one of them is the Metropolitan, which is right across the street from our main administration campus building. And our housing in each of the three properties is apartment style living, condo loft style living, uh, two bedroom, two bath units. Uh, we have four students in each unit. So two students will share a bedroom, two students will share the other bedroom, and then all four of the students will share the living room room space which is which will complain which will contain the living room and also the kitchen thank you steven so um molly i shared with you we have this amazing um youtube reel of videos from all the houses at bennington so you can um go in and actually take a really close in-depth look so at bennington because i think we're a bit pressed for time but at bennington we have um, different types of housing and but each of those houses can host uh, between 30 and 40 students they share a pretty big lounge area they they share maybe one or two kitchens depending on the structure of the house and um, students live there in a uh, you know the rooms usually first year or incoming students share the room with someone we also do have emergency singles if that is um, something that a student is interested in. And we do have really great um, sort of personalities for each of the houses at Bennington. And you can meet each of those um, through the YouTube tours that uh, I just sent you. And um, also please feel welcome to visit um, Bennington um, admissions at any time. And there you can also take some virtual tours if that is something that you might be interested in. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Molly. And, um, you know, again, reach out to us if you have any further questions about Bennington or about FIDM and um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Oh, I see. You're so welcome, Molly. <laughs> so let me stop recording.